All right, we're going to start out with uh, Swing Makeover number 70, my first lesson here of the summer. Paul, 65-year-old, and he had two main problems. He wasn't staying connected. He wasn't swinging in a powerful arc, pulling the batter out, and he was rolling the wrist over before impact. Instead of, the side pulling, instead of having the rotation pull uh, the hand path down to the point of impact and a nice axe snap, look at how you roll the wrist over and the bat pops over. A very common problem we see. And the other thing is a hand path. You want to go to where the point of contact should be, not up at the ball. Your knob is aiming way up here, and you know you want to have your hands coming down towards that path of the ball. And they come up, and then they go down. See that? It's a, really a three-pronged problem of not getting a good, good enough rotation. That rotation, not pulling the hands on a straight path down to whether it's a low pitch or a high pitch, that's going to vary. Brett has a nice video on the the spectrum of the swing that we just put up to, and you don't have a strong axe snap. I'll give you some examples of that. We're going to show you how you improved. You start out with about 40 to 64 miles an hour, and this one here, it's a little bit better as far as hand path down to the ball, but again, uh, your wrists are rolling and your hands kind of get jammed in the side. We want to power around in an arc, and we want to pull that axe snap down to the ball. Funny thing here on Brett's swing, look at how the hands fall around in an arc. You can see that. They don't come forward nearly as much as people think. Lag and snap and everything else. They're powering around in an arc, and there's a little bit of extension outside there. It's a rotational swing, and that swing is very, very, very rotational, and it's very key for that to pull your connected lead arm to the point of contact with the ball and then to act snap. If you don't have a powerful rotation, you just aren't going to have much. Here's Bob Waldeck, and... Bob used to be on the Long Haul Bombers. He's in his 60s, the most powerful hitter I've ever seen in senior softball. Watch his hand path come around here. It follows around in a nice, powerful arc. The hips are against the front brace leg with the weights transferred are pulling the body. The hips and, and the shoulders are pulling the hand around the arc. Jeremy Yates, one of the top young pros. Uh, watch how the hips and shoulders pull the lead hand around in an arc. We'll go back here to Yates again just for a second. And watch as Yates come around. Watch as his hips are rotating, rotate, 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 and then now he snaps X style right down to the point of the ball. He took his hands down initially there, and when he finishes, he's got a high finish. But his hand path, the second thing is hand path. Look, see it go down towards the ball on a nice path here right towards the point of impact. When I say the ball, I mean the point of impact. But uh, And then as he continues to rotate, he pull snaps into the ball and then continues that path of the bat on the same path afterwards. Keep a good practice. Now Brett comes up here next and watch Brett's practice swing. It's a nice pull snap around. And now he's got a pitch here. It's a low pitch. And watch that rotation powered around and then there's a X snap right before impact and watch the bat continue on the same path all the way around. His hands look a little funnier because he's got an overlap grip. That's why you don't see quite the dramatics that you do on some of the others that have a conventional grip. But watch it power around an arc Hand path went to the point of contact, and it's a side axe snap. Got some more examples here for you. There's a higher pitch. Pulls the axe snap. Rotational pull takes the axe snap up to the point of contact, and whether you strike the bottom or the top of the ball uh, allows you to get underspin. Again, for me, uh, being 67 years old, here's, here's a swing from last summer where, again, watch the rotation. It pulls it forward 90 degrees. Now it starts to follow the rotation to the inside. That helps bring the bat head forward. And again, I have an overlap grip. It's a snap through. And watch how it continues on the same path all the way around. And the rotation carries you all the way around. I'm not going to be as athletic as those guys, those guys. But you can see, at about any age, you can do it. Something that I'm really working on this summer and kind of struggling with after my knee replacement, getting that those three things together myself. So... It's a constant struggle. It's a constant balance between them. Paul Stanley. We started to talk about the X snap now. Paul Stanley's a DeMarini guy. Goes backside. Got tremendous power, but watch his wrists. They torque sideways right there within the rotational pull. See how he's still pulling? And they torque sideways. They don't roll over till right there. Great example of a pull snap and a pull X snap within the rotation. Palm down and palm up. Harvey. One of the best hitters in the game. He was leading in the home runs on average last time I looked. Um, average anyway, home runs. He hasn't played enough games. But watch here. He does not roll over. And watch, he actually squelches the rollover right here. He hasn't rolled over yet, hasn't rolled over. His wrists have kept the position. And watch how that bat head 
comes through the ball and stays on the same plane all the way around. He's really powering in an arc. His hand path is going down to the point of impact. You can see that on a straight line. Yours dips because you are rolling the wrist. And then he snaps into the ball. Look at the back foot come off the ground. You don't have to swing up to hit a home run or hit a long line drive. This is proven here. You just want to get on the plane. Again, watch Harvey's wrist right here. They're being pulled in the rotation. Now we'll watch him X snap, just like he's bearing an X flush into the bottom third of the of the ball. Now let's watch you have the two of the jimmer stick here. Uh, this is the first day, Paul. And watch how your wrists just do the same thing. Watch them roll over right there. And this hand dives down. You lose your plane and everything else. You've got to squelch that rollover. You got, you're getting a pretty good rotation. We worked on it. But again here, um, again, they roll over too early, uh, early on in the swing. So we had to find a way to really power it. Your hand path is slightly better there, but your hand path always wanted to come up. So we had to fix the hand path and fix the rollover. Here's a practice swing. Again, you're into the rollover too soon. So uh, here's some of the first day swings as well. Hands are rolling over. That, that makes the left hand dive down and you get jammed in. So pretty much consistent on having the same swing problems all the time. There you tried to X snap a little bit, but you weren't power, you, you buckled the lead arm, you weren't powering around on an arc. So went to work on some simple things that worked for you on it. Now here's Dale. This is a, a Michigan guy who's an A player. Again, an overhead shot of watching how the hands power in the arc and there's an X snap within it. I think you watch these, it's going to reinforce you. This is um, Ed Starcher. Former major player, now a great senior player. And watch how he powers around in an arc. The overhead views give a great shot. Uh, this is Alan Tanner. Everybody knows Alan Tanner. And watch, he's coming, the first 90 degrees is coming forward, but watch his left hand follow the arc. Follows the arc to the inside. Follows the arc to the inside again. And that really enhances the ability to take that bat from here to here. Almost uh, 90 degrees. And he snaps while he does it. Wrists aren't rolling over. He's got a bit of a over, modified overlap. And then watch it continue on the same path. It doesn't vary. It's, it's like bread swing, like uh, Yates's, everybody else's. It'll come around on the same plane. It won't bounce off and it won't uh, roll up over the top. Separate that snap from the roll. Now, you had such a problem with going up with that swing. You want your back shoulders down and everything you want to. If your body angle's back, you always want to swing up. So I actually had to give you a good visual of of taking and pull, pulling the hands so you can get that axe snap for low pitch. You want to attack that pitch down here and you want to axe snap it down. That's why we use that. Then the second drill, what we did was we took you and just made you do like a karate chop, but you're actually pulling and snapping it with a lead arm drill. Uh, swing simulator is great. Swing simulator, your hips are pulling it and it's a shorter, quick compact. And look at how you come to the inside. Let's go back and look at that again for a second. That's the important thing about the swing simulator. You can do it wrong and just go linear straight down this rope. But I wanted you to pull on an arc. I wanted you to take your hand path down the rope. It's a slight down incline, say, for maybe a thigh-high pitch. And you want to continue to pull to the inside. And you really demonstrate that good. And look at how the wrists snap in a good position, stay palm down and palm up with no rollover. And the finish to the inside. That was, that was really nice. Also use the mule bag here to get you on a straight line. We wanted to go on a straight line on that. Again, with your with your back shoulder down, I'd like to see you have your shoulders less tilted than this. It's a hard thing for you to do. You would do it, then come back. But watch, you almost have to feel like you're going down across your body because our visual point is right here. And watch how you your hips pull, pull the hands down towards the ball, and then X snap firm into it. No rollover, and you can really feel, because this wrist here can only go so far, and you can really feel yourself, if you torque the wrist sideways against one another, within that pull snap of the rotation, you can really feel a great uh, ability to bring 100% of the force to that point. So as we continue down off the tee here, this is dramatically better right away. Watch, and one thing too, remember, get the hands up higher especially on lower pitches. If your hands are up here, every pitch that you're going to swing at, we talked about swinging from chest down to just below your belt, every pitch is going to be below there. So even though your shoulders are dipped, you want to try to take your hand past, you know, to the point of impact, which is right here. And again, this is really a, a great improvement on that. Hand path to the ball, hand path to the ball, you're within the rotation, and then you X snap through, a little bit of a rollover early, 
But that's something that, uh, you know, we didn't cure 100% today, but I got you on the right path of trying to get you trained at home off the team with some of the devices. Again, X snap too. You're a little bit into the roll there. You should go from lag to snap on it, but far better. And this one here, I told you to actually aim at the bottom of the ball. You wanted to try to cut a line drive, a long line drive of the gap that might carry out for a home run. Again, hands back um, all the way back to the connection. Your hips are connected through your lead lat, through your shoulder, all the way to the lead arm. Wherever your hips rotate and pull, you're going to have a lot of power, and then you just have to use that to guide the hand path to the point of impact and snap right before impact. This is lower pitch here. It's a great rotation. Your hips and shoulders are really pulling it. Your hand path's going down towards the ball. And we're actually, I told you to aim at the lower third of the ball and watch how you cut through that. Just, just really, really nice. A huge improvement here. Uh, you know, it's always a struggle to get into live pitching and do it the same way, but doing those drills, doing the T work with the GT and the Evil balls are going to be great. Right away, here's your very first swing when we went live. Again, your bat's not flat. It's not high. You're Again, you're thinking low to high to try to lift the ball. And anyhow, your hand path alone is ruining it. That bat should be lying flat across here. The hand should be up higher. Shoulders should be down less. All you can do out of here is swing up. And, and that knob, you have to redirect that knob so it's going to go down and then come up. Knob comes down. Hands come up. you got a loop. But, you know, it's a better it's a better X snap, uh, not quite 100%, but you hit that ball as a line drive, which is improved. Right, let's go back and watch this one here. Is it bad here? Okay. A little trouble playing that clip. We'll go on to the next one. There you go. You don't roll your wrist over till right now. That's better. This one here, you had a higher pitch. Again, you pull. The hands dive down, and they still roll a little bit before impact, but it's improving. You hit. You never told me you never hit a ball over 220 or 230, and you hit six balls that went from 285 to the base of the fence today at 300 feet. By far a 50, 50, 60, 70-foot improvement in distance, but that's with mechanics that are still somewhat flawed. Right here, hands should be back up higher. Does our hand path go down to the point of impact? Not too bad. Hand path traveled down to the point of impact, which is going to be right here. And now as we continue to rotate, are we going to see a nice X snap into the ball? Better, but this hand still wanted to roll, okay? That's the final missing link for you. That rolls, it makes the hands dive down, and uh, it's a pop-up. You cleaved underneath it because it didn't stay on that same path. You're close to it. You did a good in practice. Now, here the one thing is, let's watch our rotation. Let's watch our accent. The hands dive down a little bit again, and you're underneath that ball. you got to keep it in a pure X snap form. That's better. But the one, the one thing that troubled me a little bit here on the higher pitches was you're dropping your shoulders so much and you're lowering your hands so much that you make everything more of an upswing. We want to keep it down like Ryan Harvey so that if, if it is a pitch that's a little bit lower that we can go ahead and not have such an upswing. Again, much less roll over the wrist. Still a little bit though. You've squelched it some, but this is one of your longer balls here and it's a nice ball. But the one thing is you're working in a zone that's pretty much effective only in the chest area. We you know, want to get you down here like we did in the tee. Hands up. Here's a pitch that's down around waist high. Your rotation pulls the hand path towards the ball, and then you X snap straight through. That's that's ideally what we want to work on, Paul, and that's what you're going to have to do if you want to really improve on the swing. Such an improvement on power and exit speed and getting close, but just not quite there. So I'm having you do these drills here, and every drill you do, you're taking the hand path for a chest high pitch. You got to practice that down here on some thigh high pitches and on some pitches around your waist. This was one of the breakthrough drills for you, but you're doing everything on a high pitch. That's level, but you know, typically you want to work it lower. Here's some of the swings you had from the back angle here just to give you an idea of where it's going. You're trying to get a good, there you go, that's a lower pitch there. 
You get some good line drives. You get some good long balls. Look at that. That's one of the balls that just about went out when your previous best, that one too, when your previous best was uh, only at, um, what, uh, 220 feet. So we're going to watch Davis Billardello here. Give you a little idea how to attack a low ball. You know, watch Billardello's hands here. They're up high, and he gets a lower pitch, hand path to the ball within the rotation, and then a strong axe snap through. Look at how he cuts every ball. Bill Ardell is a top De Marini pro, a confidence player, and so he'd be a great guy to emulate. So there's a great lesson. We'll let you talk about the De Marini bats a little bit here. You swung the brand new Denny Crines in the 22. Dale Brumgart, both are unloaded at 27 ounces, and typically you said you'd swing lighter than that before. Did they feel heavy to today? No, they didn't. They did not feel heavy. Both of them, again, I thought the ball really jumped off of there. I was uh, very, very fortunate to get a lot of distance uh, with these bats without really much effort. It wasn't like I had a muscle up uh, in order to be able to drive the ball. So um, they, they had a nice... Uh, trampoline or spring effect off the bat. Despair, stay unloaded, my friend. Swing to your Marines, my friends. Okay, boys, thank you for the unbiased uh, <laughs> reviews. Uh, again, D Marines is our main partner, Wilson Sports. You can go to their website. There's a discount code there for your first time shopper. You get, I think, 25% off. Uh, also want to thank Evil Sports. 5% uh, off if you say swing makeover and order direct from them. Swing Makeover is the code for that. We use a two-piece Evil Ball. We use a 44-375s. Shirts and Logo is another sponsor of ours, or partner of ours, I should say. Uh, the part, they're Pioneer and Sub Die. And then the GT. We use all the GTs for our work, and they're in most of the Major League camps. So appreciate uh, you guys listening here. A little glitch in, the, in my live presentation here. But, uh, Paul, great job, and continue work on those drills. And I know there's nothing but good things ahead for you. Thank you.